Today, we're here with Sally Fallon, a nutritionist and founder of the Weston A. Price Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to restoring nutrient dense food to the American diet. She will discuss how to have a healthier, smarter, and happier baby through the foods that you eat during pregnancy. Thank you so much for being here. And I want to talk about prenatal nutrition because most people don't realize how important that really is. I want to talk to you about. I guess, why, why is, what is the importance of eating well when you're pregnant or even before you're pregnant? Right. We treat pregnancy so casually. And then when things go wrong, I say we blame the three G's, germs, genes, and God. But uh, we never think about what the diet was like. And yet in traditional cultures, they had a whole program that started six months before conception of special foods for the parents to eat and then the mom to eat while she's pregnant and nursing and while the child is growing because this is a time that the baby needs extra nutrition and the um, mom needs to prepare so that the moment she becomes pregnant, all that nutrition is available. So these cultures had what we call sacred foods or special pregnancy foods. And they were all the foods that we're told not to eat. And some cultures it was butter um, liver was uh, kind of universally a sacred food for pregnant women and also fish eggs, very nutrient dense seafood. Mm-hmm. So we do okay. have a special pregnancy diet. We actually have a fridge magnet that you can uh, put on your refrigerator to remind you of the diet. And I can tell you that the baby's born to the moms who have had the wisdom to prepare for pregnancy and eat this way during pregnancy. Um, They are just gorgeous babies. Uh, Birth is easy. Um, They nurse easily. Mom has lots of milk. And um, the babies are really strong, strong and healthy. So about all those women that think, oh, you know, I'm pregnant, so I can eat, you know, four pieces of cake because I'm eating for two. And why is that not the right way? Why is that? Why do you disagree with that, I guess? Okay. Well, the cake is just empty. There's nothing to nourish you in the cake. Mm-hmm. And it's what Dr. Price would call a displacing food of modern commerce. It is pushing out your appetite for the nutrient-dense foods. There's no nutrition in a piece of cake or in a cookie, <laughs> you know, or in uh, commercial French fries. And uh, so these definitely need to be out of your diet. But you shouldn't wait till pregnancy to start this. I mean, it, it takes a, a, quite a preparation period of eating the right way. And that means no processed foods, of course, just good. What, so, why do you, so you're saying that even what you eat six months before you become pregnant is very important? Absolutely. And we've had a lot of moms who've really had a bad diet or they've been vegetarians or vegans. Mm-hmm. And we tell them to prepare for two years before they become pregnant. Two years. And most of them are really grateful that we told them that because... They were all worn out, depleted anyway, and uh, they, you need time to kind of build up your nutritional stores again. Is that the same for the, for the dads then too, with what they're eating? For the dad, yeah. the dad needs to do this too because the quality of his sperm is highly dependent on his diet, and he needs to eat these nutrient-dense foods. By the way, one of the foods we highly recommend is eggs, especially the yolks, and they should be two egg yolks a day in these preconceptual diets. Um, along with liver and raw milk and butter and all these good old-fashioned foods. Uh, Yes, and then, well, you say the dad's not carrying the baby. That's true, but the dad needs to be healthy. And, uh, you know, once the baby's born, he'll be relied on to be healthy and calm and, you know, good-natured, all those things that this diet gives you. So tell me, if you're pregnant, what are the most important things that you should be eating? Well, you do need to eat some organ meats because they're the really nutrient-dense foods. And this is hard for some people. They have to get used to this. So that could be liverwurst, liver pate. Um, It could be learning to make meatloaf with a little bit of added liver so you don't even know you're eating it. Uh, Mm -hmm. But a scrapple is another really great mid-Atlantic food that's um, easy for people to eat. It's really delicious. So uh, we, we really, this is just of the utmost importance. Liver is the most nutrient dense food there is. And it's very high in vitamin A, which is going to be critical for the development of the embryo. But how does the food that they were eating the impacting the unborn baby? I mean, in, ma- in many ways, uh, just reading an article about um, glyphosate in Roundup 
uh, impacts the unborn baby. Soy foods impact the unborn baby in very negative ways. So you know, all of that needs to be gotten out of the diet. But what in what way is that? Well, impact? the soy foods uh, disrupt hormonal development and even uh, behavior. Uh, um, in the uh, in the fetus exposed to just small amounts of the disrupting chemicals in soy um, shows um, alterations behavior, a lot more stress in social situations, a lot more just staying alone. These are rats, of course, but they do see disruptions in their behavior. And behavior of the child after they're born. Exactly. Because exactly. it's a hormonal thing. Yes. So, yes. so now that you say that, so there's such, there's an, an exponential increase in, you know, um, spectrum disorders and ADHD, and do you think that has anything to do with the environmental impact on some of the food that we're eating? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We forget that the brain and our emotional biochemistry are all dependent on good nutrition. And one of the key things for brain nutrition is animal fats, like butter. Mm -hmm. uh, they contain something called arachidonic acid, which is essential for your brain to work, brain and nervous system, and also for the gut to work. And if these are not in the diet, um, there's going to be a real compromise in all of this. Are there things that people think are really healthy or that they eat during pregnancy that maybe they're mistaken by? Or Well, one of the things that people do that they think is healthy is to take protein powders, mm -hmm. you know, a whey powder or protein drink in the morning. Uh -huh. And we are concerned, uh, of course, you need good protein. You need good animal protein. But people are getting too much protein with these protein powders. Very hard on the kidneys which are additionally stressed during pregnancy. But the key point about the protein is it depletes the body of vitamin A. And vitamin A is so essential for healthy growth of the fetus and the child. So that's one thing that we would definitely warn against. Any kind of soy food, which is full of estrogens, um, you know, all processed food, you know, all the vegetable oils, all the you know, burgers and fast food and everything. I mean, this, you, you need to get used to this new diet before you become pregnant because by then it's too late. So you mentioned like the protein powder, but a lot of pregnant women are recommended to take supplements. What is your view on that? Typically when a woman gets pregnant, she goes to the doctor and he puts her on a prenatal. Uh -huh. And we're very concerned about these prenatals. Uh, for one thing, they don't have the right kind of vitamin A in them. They don't have a good balance of A and D. Um, a lot, of, they have um, folic acid in them when it really should be folate. Mm -hmm. So they can actually end up with a deficiency in folate. Uh, you know, a lot, they're just artificial vitamins. They're all made in China. There's no quality control. And we really think you should be getting your nutrients from food, from nutrient-dense food. So the vitamin A is, is one of the key the key food you're, you're saying, and that's through um, liver and organ meats, you're saying? Yes, and all the nutrients and animal fats. Then you do need some good dairy products for calcium and phosphorus. It's your, your requirements are going to go way up. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's very hard to absorb these nutrients from pasteurized and ultra-pasteurized dairy products. And um, um, a lot of people are very allergic to these products, too. So we do recommend, at the very least, a lot of cheese, Preferably raw cheese, and mm -hmm. raw cheese should be um, digestible for everybody. Mm -hmm. And if you can, we recommend the, the raw milk, you know, like a glass of raw milk every day. Every day. Yes. Um, Lots of eggs. Lots of eggs are a brain food. So I know, I know you talk about where it's important to eat meat, and, and people who are um, talk yeah. about the vegetarians, why is that not an optimal um, diet well, for a pregnancy. This is going to sound really harsh, but I would not recommend that vegetarians have children. I would, I either get off your vegetarian diet or just decide you're not going to have children because it's just not fair to this child to bring it into the world so nutritionally depleted. There's so many nutrients that you're not getting in a vegetarian diet, especially a vegan diet. And uh, we hear, we hear about these cases. And in fact, there have been parents sent to jail for child abuse who are vegans, who are bringing their child up on a vegan diet. I just think it's a terrible thing. These vegetarian groups are telling parents that they can have a completely healthy baby on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet. And it's um, a terrible falsehood. And of course, who suffers? It's the child. In what way? That's okay, so they're going to be uh, de deficient in complete protein, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, They'll be deficient in B12, which is so critical to develop in the nervous system, possibly B6, 
zinc, calcium, and possibly phosphorus, and iron. Um, and, uh, you know, iron uh, deficiency anemia is another terrible thing to impose on a child. And so what, what are the implications for the child and if they're deficient in these things? Just brain development? Uh, they, the brain function's not going to be right. They'll have digestive disorders. They won't grow properly. They'll be very weak. They'll be way behind in their milestones. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll always be small and fragile. It's a very unfair thing to do to a child. Right. And that's, that goes in through the pregnancy diet because it's so important because that's how they're... Exactly. And that's when they need these nutrients. Uh, just, just take calcium. They need a source of absorbable calcium and all through the growth period in utero. And then when they're born, even more so because that's when the bones really start to grow. And your bone density is determined when you're young, when you're a baby and when you're a toddler. And that's when you need the really good uh, calcium source. We talked about the fats and, and proteins, but are they all created equal? Because if you go and buy a meat at the store, there's lots of, you know, you want, obviously you want to get a grass-fed, but not many people are aware of, like, you know, most stores don't even sell 100% grass-fed meat. It's always know, has I some. So, so what do you think about that? Is it worse to eat, like, some meat that has lots of, you know, um, grains and, and different hormones or not eat meat at all? I, I still would eat it. I mean, you still need meat or so you need animal foods. And right. so let's just say that you're a, you want to get pregnant. The shop, the edges would be meat, eggs, um, fish, if you can, shellfish, poultry, cheese. Um, that's what I would recommend. However, uh, at the Weston A. Price Foundation, we have a whole system for putting you in touch with local farms, joining food groups. Uh, there are Farmers who deliver every two weeks to a drop-off point, all these wonderful grass-fed foods, soy-free eggs, uh, raw milk, uh, good cheese, and that's what we recommend. <clears throat> we try to make it as easy as possible for prospective parents. Our big emphasis is on healthy pregnancy and having healthy children. And there are any statistics on people who have eaten maybe the Western Price? We did one a short study that showed very positive uh, for people who had uh, prepared for pregnancy using our diet, less tooth decay, um, fewer things like asthma, allergies, and so forth. And we're right now uh, taking part in a very large study, over a thousand uh, families. Well, we're looking to this in more depth, but the study that we have done just shows very positive um, results. And we also have uh, what we call our Healthy Baby Gallery. We publish photographs every every month uh, or every quarter of these healthy babies. That's great. What What do you think is the most important thing for a new mom to know about their diet? And well, to continue this pregnancy diet, it needs to be a nutrient dense diet. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, all the trouble of going to find these foods, uh, preparing them, and it doesn't take a lot to prepare them, but. Uh, is will pay off in a lot more time for you in the end because your baby will be much easier, be less crying. That's one of the things we, we hear, that our, my baby doesn't cry much. Very healthy and cheerful and sleeps well. So happier so and smarter. So you don't and... have this frenetic uh, couple of years with a really unhealthy baby. That, so, yeah, so, so that you're saying that the babies who are eating, the, the parents who have the, the diet overall are showing that the babies are happier, they sleep better, yes. cognitively yep. they're performing better. Yes. Uh, one of the things that I've heard from dentists is in the babies of uh, vegetarians, even vegetarians who are fully breastfeeding their babies, if the baby teeth have come in rotten. Their teeth rotten. are rotten. All, all the baby teeth, yeah. Oh, wow. So we don't, we don't, we definitely don't hear that the teeth come in nice and white and strong. Right. That's great. Well, um, where can people go for more information on Thank um, you. the diet? Uh, go to WestonAPrice.org. It's a man's name, W-E-S-T-O-N-A-P-R-I-C-E.org. And under health topics, we have a topic uh, category called children's health. And we have lots of articles there to help you. We also have a special issue of our journal called Children's Health, which is, um, we just actually reprinted it, and that's a nice thing to, to start with. It's a vast, it's a vast subject. subject. But I, I, ha I do have a book called The Nourishing Traditions Book of Baby and Child Care, 
And that would be a, a, another good place to start. Well, thank you, Sally. If you know someone who'd be a great fit for the show, come on over to ingeniousbaby.com and share your tips and story ideas. You are your baby's first and best teacher.